I want to uh, have you turn in your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 4. I don't want anybody to be in a hurry today. We've taken the right approach to the service so we won't hold too long, and I'm conscious, and you know that, of the time. But I have an important message to speak to you today, one that I feel like the Lord would have us to preach. We're going to talk about the spirit of deception. Turn to somebody and say, the spirit of deception. Turn to somebody else and say, don't be deceived. Turn to somebody else and say, don't be deceived. There's a lot of spirits that are out in the world today. There's seductive spirits, and we'll talk about that, doctrines of, the, of devils. The Bible said, don't believe every spirit. Come on. But people today are susceptible to deception. They're susceptible to deception because of their own lustful desires and rebellion. That's the truth. Whether you say amen or not, it is the truth. This generation wants to hear what it wants to hear. And so they're easy to be deceived. They're ready to be deceived. And we're seeing it take place. And we'll talk about it as we go. But I want to set the stage for you. I don't want that to be you. How do you avoid this? By desiring the truth. Look at me. You must desire the truth. Whether it's biblical truth or truth in general out in the world, when it comes to what is right, where is clay? What is truth? We must want the truth more than anything. So seeking the truth in today's world has become more difficult. Can I hear an amen? It really has. You have to look for the truth today. Used to be, people lived by truth. You would know a man by his word. If he was honest and sincere, that was a big thing. People strove. Is that right? Strove for that. They strived for that. Who's an English person? Strive? Strived? I don't know. Not important. What is important is that they wanted to live a truthful life. And they sought the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So, I want to talk about that today. I want to talk about the spirit of deception and how that works and how to keep it out of our life. I think that's important. Because if these spirits are prevalent, and Jesus said in the, in the Word, it's throughout the Word, about the last days, He said there's going to be these spirits that are going to be very deceptive. And so, if the days were not shortened, listen to this, even the very elect would be deceived or lost. Come on. Who does that mean? Does that mean you or, or me? We could... Could that be us? It could be. If we're not careful, it might be. So we have an obligation to our self and to others that we know the truth and that we promote the truth. So this little passage has to do with what we learned today in our Scripture reading as we were hearing that apostolic charge to these uh, these ministers, we're going to read that, a little piece of that over again, and then we're going to look at some other scriptures in 2 Timothy, 
We're going to kind of go between chapter 3 and chapter 4 and a little bit in 1 Timothy. So, if you're there, say amen. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, they shall heap unto themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables. Can I hear an amen? So this idea that men would turn from truth just to hear what they want to hear, it sounds strange, but it's actually what we're seeing today. People are playing on that. They're telling us what we want to hear. And Satan is using that to change our focus. Can I spend a little time with that? Because if he can take our attention away from what is true, he will destroy the works of the church. church. It's you and I. Whether it's in the doctrine or it's just in the way that we conduct ourselves in the world, if he can present something to us that we want to hear, that we want to get involved in, that will take us away from the things of God, then he's accomplished his purpose. Look at me. We don't want that. Do you want that? Certainly we don't. It's the last day spirit of this age that we're seeing. That's why we're seeing so much of this type of thing happening all around us. And let me make some examples so that you know and you can agree that this is true. What network Do you watch for the news? Oh, you're laughing. Are you getting what I'm saying? Why are we laughing? Because the network you watch says something about you, doesn't it? Why? Yes. So we know if we mention certain networks, let's just be honest and upfront. ABC... NBC, CBS, I haven't gotten to Fox News, I'm just saying, (laughs) if that's what you watch, NSBC or whatever it is, I don't even know, CBN, (laughs) not CBN, what, TB, no, CBN, that's right, CNN. So what, what are they telling us? They're telling us things that are skewed to a certain viewpoint. If I was to say Fox News, and there's some others now that, that have the same slant, and that's just as, just as wrong or bad as the other. And you may say, oh no, Pastor Tyner, if it's slanted, to get people's attention that think a certain way and it's not based upon what is fair and just across the board. If you're telling people what they want to hear instead of giving them the complete truth, then it's wrong. Oh, Lord. I'm not here to make friends today. I'm here to tell you the truth. When we've talked about this in the church, we talked about how the internet is established and how it works and how when you watch the internet, it is figured out what you like. So all the, the things that are, that when you open up your Facebook or all the, you know, the things as you're looking through the internet, all those little things that pop up and all, you know, if you're watching YouTube, it's the same way, all those things. You know why they're there? Now stay with me. You know why they're there? Because that's what the internet has figured out that you like. So what does that do to us? It feeds us what we want to hear. That's how they make money. Look at me. This isn't rocket science. 
they figured out how to make money from you. And so they know to get your attention and st- keep you this way. Now, what does that do to the fabric of society? Are we coming together? Is that helping anything because we're pushing farther and further apart? So if there was such a thing, if there was such a thing as completely unbiased news, that would be refreshing. If it was such a thing that you could just get on and and look through and everything be unbiased as you were feeding your mind, and that's mostly what people feed their mind with anymore, what they read on the internet. Come on. And it was true and just and fair. It would be a different world. But where are we at? What's happening? And the really bad thing in all of this is that I can't tell you that the church is any different than this. We're living in a time when the church has learned to tell us what we want to hear. Even with the above things that I mentioned, there are churches now that cater to specific crowds. No matter what, they know what to say and what not to say. Because they want you to come. And so we go. And we sit. And we get fed what we want to hear. They will heap in the self teachers having itching ears and turn from the truth to fables. Itching ears. Scratch your ear a little bit. Second Timothy chapter three, verse number five. Paul's telling Timothy about the last days and because of the way that people live selfish lifestyles, because they're disobedient and rebellious, he's talking to us about things that would happen to that particular group of people. Now, I would like to tell you that we're only talking about the world when he's talking about these perilous times that will come. But as you read on, it becomes apparent He's not talking about the world. He's talking about the church. What am I preaching on today? Spirits of deception. He says that the church would be like this, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. It's kind of hard to get the anointing of the Lord when your church is slanted in a certain way, and you have projected yourself in a certain idealism, how in the world can the Holy Spirit have His way when we've already determined the way of the Lord? And so, we have a form of godliness, but we deny the power thereof. We've got churches that are uncomfortable with Speaking in tongues and the gifts of the Spirit. We really don't do that anymore. Because we would rather people come to the church. And we don't run a, want to run anybody off. Can I hear an amen? Don't let that ever be said of Tabernacle of Praise. If we ever lose the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we're no more than just a clubhouse. Can I hear an amen? amen. Woo, glory to God. Shouting message today. Have them a, a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For this sort are they, this is the kind of people that they, they uh, end up as. The Jim Joneses and those people out there in uh, Utah that, come on. End up in sexual morality, immorality, the Jim Joneses and all that kind of shazmaraz. You think you've seen something? You ain't seen nothing yet. This is going to get worse. It's going to be seductive spirits. 
Listen to what he says. They creep into houses. How do they creep into your house? How does the devil get into your house? How does he get in? You open the door. How do you open the door? Put your device in front of your nose. Right here is one of the main ways. And a spirit of seduction a lot of times is manifest and you don't even know what you're doing. You don't have enough word to know what's true and what's not true. Somebody come along with, you know, a a good looking guy. I won't mention names. Why are you laughing, Clay? Suddenly everybody's swept off their feet. They're listening. They're watching. And it doesn't matter what the man believes. I get so disappointed. I get so, I've spent so much time working with people. Teaching them the truth. Teaching them about baptism. And teaching them about the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues. Teaching them about the spiritual God. And for people to leave what is true. And go somewhere. I'm saying, don't you understand the value of what you possess? Well, I'm, I'll be alright. Let me, let me share with you what that's like. It's like Lot. Saying, I'll just go over here and my family will be alright. You better be careful where you take your family. Because they're going to train them up in Sunday school. Look at me and smile. And it says they're ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You ever seen a generation like that? The Bible said knowledge will be increased. It's not that people are stupid. People are intelligent. But they're stuck on certain things and they're getting portions of truth. Come on now. You need to know the whole truth and nothing but the truth. The Bible said buy the truth and sell it not. Let your mind expand and grow and work to be fair and impartial. Learn how to reach people no matter their persuasion. And love on people just as Jesus would. We become so bigoted in our thoughts and in our imaginations, in our verbiage, that we don't realize that we're alienating people. And causing people that we could have reached for the cause of Christ. We're causing them to walk away and not hear the truth. You are messengers of God. Oh, come on, let me preach to you a little bit. Ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Do you have the truth? Let me ask you, do you know what you believe? Brother Dave, there's very few people who could sit down and really tell you what they believe based upon Scripture. Wow. Powerful, brother. And so, you ask people, I ask you, what do you believe? How do you get saved? Hmm. Do you even know how to, to, to lead somebody to Christ? If somebody asks you, do you know how to say the sinner's prayer with someone? Would you be able to do that? Some of you say yeah. Some of you say, I don't know. I better learn that, right? I better learn what it takes to be saved. But what do you believe? Why do you believe it? Why? Because Uncle Harry said it. Because Pastor Tyner gets up and preaches that. You ought to come to my church. Hey, you're the only church that some people will ever come to. You! You'll stand before God one day. And He'll say, what have you done with what I have given you? These people work right beside of you. These were your family. Your friends. What have you done with what I've given you? How many believe that's true? Ever learning. 
but never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Just as Jenez and Jambres withstood Moses, these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate. People get to the point where, where they're only interested in position or authority or money, and they don't care about people, I'm telling you. And they are false in their uh, word, false in their prophetic utterances. They do it only for the reason of trying to draw people in. And who is Jenez and Jambres? Tell me. Does anybody know in the house? I know a few of you know. They are not musicians, but magicians. You guys had it right. Magicians out of Pharaoh's court. And what did they do? They imitated. Everybody say an imitation. Do you know the difference between what is real? Come on. A lot of you love this house. You have to admit it. Some of you are watching today and you love this house. You know why you love it? Because you come in and you feel the genuine anointing of the Holy Spirit. You love it because the Lord deals with you. You love it because the anointing flows up and down these aisles. That's why you love this house. And you're aware of what imitations are. But you become so stubborn that you don't care. Come on now. Hum a little bit, it might help you. We're dealing with religious spirits. Religious spirits are dangerous spirits. 1 Timothy chapter 4, Now the Spirit speaketh expressingly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience sheared with a hot iron. They get to where they don't care. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Some, I'm telling you, I'm standing right up here and telling you that some ministers know better. I've shared with some ministers. I've talked with them. And I know that they'll tell me. They'll tell me. Yes, what you say is true. I've had some say. I know of some who have said. Well, I've preached this all these years and I'm not going to change now. They don't care. Doesn't matter. They'll let anything and everything go on on the platform. I heard the other day somebody's upset because somebody was doing something they shouldn't. Well, if you got word of that, where should you go? Look at me, right here. Because people straight up, when they're in... Physicians, we ask them, are you doing what's right? Are you living right? Are you doing the right things? Now, I can't go home with everybody. Come on. I don't know what, I only know what people say. If you're living, let me just say it up front. If you're living in an adulterous situation with somebody you're not married to and you're having relationship with them, you don't have any business on this platform. None. And you need to set yourself down. Is that plain enough? If you're smoking dope, drinking, carrying on, you have no business on this platform or in leadership. Is that plain enough? But some people don't care. Oh, they're talented. Look at how good they can play music. Look at all the wonderful things. I don't care. It don't matter. I don't want to lose the anointing. I don't want to lose the integrity. I don't want to ruin the name of the church with hypocrisy. Can I hear an amen? I hate hypocrisy. Hallelujah. Boy, that Pastor Tyner, he gets right down to brass tacks sometimes, doesn't he? But I don't want you to be deceived. I don't want you to walk in deception. There's people that... That cater to crowds. I've told you before, if we wanted to have a big crowd, you could have a big crowd. All you have to do is do certain things and you can have a big crowd. Clay and I was talking about Wednesday nights and how some of, you, some of you won't get your lazy butt out to church on Wednesday night. And I said, if we had food, they would come. 
hum a little bit, it might help you. It's the truth. Get yourself out of your lazy state and get to church and learn from the Word of God. And you say, well, I wasn't there Wednesday. He's picking on me. Nobody will ever know that if you just don't show your face to be all ugly. Put a smile on. They'll think you was here. It doesn't matter. I said 1 Timothy chapter 4. The Spirit speaketh expressingly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience cheered with a hot iron. Notice this next part. Forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to receive, be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Now, I don't know whether I'll get to it, but Paul makes mention of a couple of people that gave himself, gave them, gave him a, a hard time and a difficult time to the church because of their doctrines. They were preaching the resurrection was already passed. Arminius and Philetus. These kinds of spirits have been around for a while. Everybody say religious spirits. And we're not just talking about liberal spirits. We're talking about religious spirits too. Look at me. Religious spirits are seductive. Why? Because they tell you that you're not holy. And we all want to be holy. And so we stack our hair up on top of our head and we wear our dresses to the ground and long sleeves, no jewelry, no makeup. By the way, ladies, wear makeup, please. My own personal opinion. Just don't be gaudy about it. Who cares if you put on, we used to call it rouge. You remember those days? Little rouge, little lipstick. I tell you what, uh, Beth got dressed up yesterday. Stone cold fox. Clay was just all nervous again. He'd think it was a newlywed. Yeah. Woo, glory, that woman, I'm telling you. My wife still makes my heart go pity pat. She wouldn't go to bed for years without makeup. She'd wear makeup to bed. I'm telling you the truth. Now, we won't get into that being a spirit of deception. We won't do that for our own well-being. But uh, let me get on what I was talking about. Religious spirits. Say it with me. Religious spirits. Religious spirits will make you feel less than. It's been a trend to go back to some of the Old Testament and try to implement it. All right. You're not holy if you, you don't honor the Sabbath day. And by the way, the Sabbath day, and this is true, is not on Sunday. The Sabbath is on Saturday. And we come to the church on Sunday, which is the first day of the week, and you kind of find that in the Bible that the disciples did that. that they entered into the, the house of the Lord on the first day of the week, and they brought their tithes and offerings, and so we follow that principle. Some people don't honor that. They honor Saturday. And it's their business if they want to Worship the Lord. Every man has to choose that according to the Word of God based upon what they feel, and that's all right. If you want to honor the Sabbath, then you do that, but that's not what makes you holy. Every man has a choice according to what the Scripture is and what day you want to honor the Lord. I think it's good to have a, a day of rest. I think that's the way God had met it. And can I preach to you? I'm still looking at the time. It's only seven minutes after 12. If you give me 10 more minutes, I'll wrap it up. Sabbath. Everybody say Sabbath. It's a good thing, right? But when people tell you that you must come to the church on the Sabbath on Saturday and you're wrong if you don't, then that's a religious spirit. And it's not true to what God's Word says because we're not under the law. We're under, somebody tell me what it is, grace. 
We're under grace. So we're not under the law. The same thing comes with some of this other stuff that they try to tell us. And and here it says about eating meats. Some people say, you eat pork, you're going to hell. That's not what the Word tells me. It's been given of God and all of it's all right as long as we do what? What are we supposed to do over our food? We pray. We pray. Not Pork's not really good for you. And that's why it was there in the Old Testament the way it was because God's trying to help you to live a better life and not have all that cholesterol in your veins. But you can eat food with cholesterol and the old folks did it and they worked outside and they sweated all that stuff out and they lived long, healthy lives. We just don't work hard enough. It's our problem. We're lazy. Can I say it the way it is? But some will teach you that these things are wrong. As I said, Hymenaeus and Philetus, they were teaching false doctrine. They were making people fall away because of their false doctrine. The the thing of it is, is these are seducing spirits. They will make you feel like if you don't do this, then you're wrong. You're evil. And now, if you do this, you're holy. If dress could make you holy, then believe me, I would be promoting that Every Sunday morning, I would tell you that you better dress a certain way. You better, but dress has no thing, nothing to do with holiness. Holiness is in your heart, right? Cover up your nakedness for God's sake. I, I was at Walmart the other day, and what some of these ladies are thinking? Help me now. I mean, uh, and they had. Just didn't have, let me just say it this way and I'll be kind. They didn't have the shape for it. <laughs> but they thought they did. And we're showing way too much of what I didn't want to see. And when it's right there in your face, you just go, oh God. I told Trish, I said, oh Lord, help us, Jesus. Come on, y'all been there. You know what I'm talking about. And if I, if I were to dress in certain clothes, in my stature right now, you'd say, oh, Brother Tyner, please. Jeff was telling me the other day, he said, some of them shirts you wear, we need, you need to put a t-shirt on underneath it. I thought, hey, are my pecs that wonderful? Jesus. They, I got to tell you this, this is funny. They had a picture going around for a while of a, of, of a frog, you know, standing up with his little and little skinny legs. And Sister Tyner got the biggest kick out of that. And I'm thinking, what in the world? Honey, that doesn't look like me at all. That's what I... Jesus spoke of these days and said it would be times like the world's never seen before. Rumors of war. He talked about nation rising against nation. But something else he talked about was people coming along deceiving others. Saying, I am Christ. In verse 11 of the chapter 24, he talked about false prophets. So what's it going to take? It's going to take solidity. It's going to take you understanding and living your life around the Word. The Word. The Word. Making sure that you seek for the truth. Not children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lay in wait to deceive. Some of you are still children. You're still needing milk to survive. We have a Revelation class on Wednesday night. Why aren't you attending Revelation class? Some of you say, I want to get deep in the Lord. I want to know the end times. I want to know what's going to take place in the end times. No, what you want to know is what the news is saying about the end times. What you need to know is what the Bible says about the end times and filter that. You had it right. You need to know. 
You're talking about getting deep in the Word. Are you deep in the Word? Do you even know what deep in the Word means? So there's going to be these false Christs. And there's going to be people that deceive. And the Lord Jesus said, beware of false prophets. They come in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they're ravening wolves. So you need to know the people that you're around. and Watch their life. I ask you a question. Do you believe that I'm a ravening wolf? After 33 years of ministry, do you see fangs in me? No, some of you don't like it because I teach the truth. But I don't, I don't destroy people. And my life's not a sham. And I've kept my name. People who teach the truth are not always popular. Because not everybody wants to hear what you have to say. But they are people of integrity. You see me here, you see me out there. Same person. Same person. That's the way I've lived my life. No different. Ask anybody that really knows me. It's been to my house. This is how I live my life. This is who I am. Bible said, study to show yourself approved. We already went to that scripture. Verse 16 says, shun profane and vain babblings for they increase unto more ungodliness. Shun them! Get away from things that do not help you or edify you or strengthen you. Turn your attention to things that are real and true. Strive to understand what is real and true. I understand it's difficult in these days to know what is truth. But do your best. I think the last thing I'm going to say before I close is you need a spirit of discernment. You ask, which of the spiritual gifts is, are the most important in these last days? What do you think it is, Ron? We've talked about it. I believe it's the spirit of discernment. You know why? Without it, I don't think you can survive the last days. I don't think without the spirit of it, discernment, you can even operate correctly in the other gifts. I've poured out my heart this morning. It's not an easy message to teach. But it's one you all needed to hear.